Here in this video we will dive into the movie Independence Day and its sequel Resurgence and discuss everything about the Queen Halves the Alien. We will first take a look at their history on Earth, then their species profile and then ending with the Queen's design, biology, her biosuit and how she commands the interstellar alien swarm. It's pretty interesting to have a techno swarm alien species that imbibes horror, sci-fi and fantasy aspects into one. So let's take a deeper look into it. The first recorded interaction between humanity and these harvester aliens was in 1947 when a spaceship of theirs crash landed on the Foster Ranch outside of Roswell, New Mexico. In the crash, two aliens were killed while a third was seriously injured. So on July 2nd, 1996, the harvesters dispatched a mothership to Earth and began their invasion in what became known as the War of 1996. Arriving in massive city-sized destroyers, the harvesters used varying tactics including human satellites to relay signals between their vessels and coordinate their attacks, destroying nearly every major city in the world during their initial strike. They were later however defeated by the use of a computer virus to disable the shields of their ships and also by a daring surgical strike into the mothership with a nuclear bomb which sets off a chain reaction that crippled the rest of the ships on Earth. So although defeated in 1996, many harvesters survived. Some managed to establish a level of resistance against humanity on Earth, but were ultimately either eliminated or captured by human forces. However, prior to their defeat, the harvesters sent a distress signal to deep space, warning the rest of their species of their failure. And a distress call was received by one of the queens, which made its way to the planet inside an even larger mothership with a swarm of her minions by her side. This culminated in the Second War of 2016, 20 years after the first invasion and even though humanity had prepared for such an encounter, what they got was still way more than they could handle. So in the vast expanse of the galaxy there exist these aliens, possessing advanced intellect and technology. They scour the stars in search of planets to exploit. With ruthless efficiency, they decimate indigenous life forms and drain their planets of their resources to fuel their insatiable hunger for growth and propagation. However, the real origins of these harvester aliens are shrouded in mystery, with their true name lost to time and their legacy are just the countless civilizations they have obliterated in their wake. The harvester aliens look a lot like the Martians from the War of the Worlds remake movie, at least to the layman. Physically, the harvesters resemble slender bluish-grey quasi-humanoids standing 3 to 4 feet tall. They have two long arms and two feet with two digits each. Their heads feature in large rear sections kind of like the crest with large pupilless reflective eyes that are silvery and they also seem to have white nictating membranes instead of normal eyelids. They lack any visible mouth and communication is achieved through a sophisticated form of telepathy or ESP, extrasensory perception. They can also exert mind control by attaching the biosuit's tentacles to the victim's necks and using their vocal cords to communicate with humans. These normal harvesters are frail and can be killed easily, so that is why they encase themselves inside their biosuits, which gives them a more menacing appearance, and with it they stand 9 feet tall or 2.7 meters. They have two arms and legs and a multitude of tentacles that sprout out from their backs. Now, finally, let's take a look at the Queen Harvester. So these aliens usually traverse through space in colossal motherships each approximately 5,000 kilometers in diameter. These ships are overseen by a single harvester queen inside of it. The dominant individual of their species who commands the swarm and also the release of numerous smaller scout motherships to scout the stars for potential planets to invade, each around 400 kilometers in diameter, to find new planets for consumption. Each of these scout motherships carry 83 city destroyers, massive vessels with a diameter of 25 kilometers each. So with this enormous force behind her, the Harvester Queen serves as their leader and also the matriarch of their species, embodying the collective consciousness of their entire hive swarm, their hive mind. The Harvester Queen is massive compared to the normal drones, dwarfing them and their war machines in every aspect. While the workers are seen to be 3 to 4 feet tall and around 9 feet or 2.7 meters tall in their biosuits and the soldiers around 12 feet tall, the queen by itself is a massive monstrosity that stands around 131 feet or 40 meters tall without the suit and with it she stands an imposing 60 meters or 200 feet in height, the size of a kaiju. 
She is beige grayish in coloration with a few parts of her skin that is translucent and shows some sort of a bioluminescent blood coursing through her entire body. She resembles a queen xenomorph in certain ways with a large crest on her head and two smaller hands on the chest alongside four longer limbs and being biomechanical in nature. And these four longer limbs as well as the others all end in two fingers, two digits. Unlike the drones, the queen seems to have organic tentacles that emerge from her back. So even though she looks frail without her bodysuit, her size infers that she can still smash anything she wants to. She is the only member of a species that possesses a working mouth, which has teeth similar to those of humans. And she also seems to possess a massive insect-like abdomen. Her biosuit, like the others of the workers and the soldiers, are more monstrous representations of their initial appearance. The queen's biosuit in particular is way larger than the queen itself, increasing her height to 60 meters or 200 feet. So while the queen has six limbs in total, the biosuit gives her an extra two to control. So in total, the queen harvester has 14 appendages. Okay, let's take a look at these. Four organic looking legs and an additional two heavily armored ones, as well as two long arms that emerge from the chest to handle weapons and stuff. These along with the six tentacles that sprout out from the bag gives the Queen Harvester a high level of mobility and handling capabilities. The biosuit is protected by a powerful shield generator that can generate a force field to block out any form of attack, be it projectiles or energy beams, and even in theory, it can withstand a cold fusion bomb. So the Queen seems to be the only individual of the Harvester alien species to have a truly sentient mind with which it uses to control the hive like some sort of a swarm command unit. Completely merciless, these queens show no interest in peaceful coexistence, opting instead for total annihilation and genocide of the planet's life forms. Although seemingly evil, this doesn't really seem to equate to a true malevolence, as they are only truly motivated by their survival instincts like social insects seen on Earth. And although not truly insects in any way, they exhibit some sort of a used social behavior, similar to many social earth arthropods, with a hierarchical caste system that has the queen on top and the workers or soldiers beneath it, with all of them working in unison for the propagation of the species. But then again, the queen hunting and searching for the sphere on earth does point to some sort of an evil intent towards the object, like a form of hatred or enmity or even jealousy or vengeance. Anyway, that's all we have about the Queen Harvester for now. So if you like this video, then watch this other one as well. And do check out our channel for other monster content, you know, movie monster content. We might have things you haven't seen before or things that YouTube hasn't recommended in quite a while. Anyway, like, subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Take care, fam.